Coney Island's first roller coaster was built with a shocking purpose. But did it really discourage sinners? When textile manufacturer La Marcus Adna Thompson quit his job to focus on building amusement rides for fairs, his intentions were not solely focused on just providing people with a good time. Thompson hoped his invention would inject some virtue back into a society that was being poisoned with vice and crime. What better place to debut his invention than the notorious hot spot of debauchery itself? Coney Island, a place described by author Stephen M. Silverman as a four-mile-long, half-mile-wide coastal citadel of grime, crime, intoxication and fornication. To understand the reputation that Coney Island would develop over the years, we must travel back in time to 1824 when the first bridge was built connecting the island to the mainland. A hotel followed soon after. With Coney Island located so close to Manhattan and other boroughs, it offered wealthy Manhattanites the perfect illusion of a proper vacation without too far to travel. As more affordable transport links were established, the island continued to grow as a destination for the middle classes. Entrepreneurs, sensing an opportunity, soon began catering for the various needs of visitors, with wooden bathhouses appearing along the shore, providing the privacy needed for people to change from city clothes into rented wool swimsuits. Outlets selling beer also began to spring up, an addition some believed signified the island's descent into debauchery. A vacation on Coney Island wasn't all roses. Within decades, gang activity had started and a trip to the hot spot often had the potential to end badly. As the years passed, Coney Island was no longer the picture of sophistication its early years had suggested. By the early 20th century, an area had appeared that was full of opium dens, bedding parlors, dance halls and boxing rings. Many of the bathhouses now had holes drilled in them, turning them into peep show booths where local prostitutes put on shows in exchange for a buck. For more money, peeping toms could do more than just peep, with prostitution and drug abuse rife. Too many areas of Coney Island were fast becoming considered a one-way ticket to hell. Which is where Thompson enters the picture with his roller coaster. The switchback railway was a sideways facing bench that traveled between elevated towers at the then thrilling speed of 6 miles per hour. Even the most vice-ridden visitors to Coney Island were able to get a thrill from the amusement park's newest addition. And as far as Thompson was concerned, any time spent on the ride was time spent away from the brothels opium dens and bedding parlors. The switchback railway of 1884 would prove such a hit that more and more rides and amusement parks appeared. Crowds flocked to the illuminated Luna Park, Dreamland and Steeplechase Park to experience the rush of adrenaline and an enormous dose of unadulterated fun. In a time before cars or movies existed to transport people to other worlds, the prospect of an amusement park offered an adventure that was unparalleled. But however wholesome Thompson's intentions were, he did overlook one thing. At a time when propriety was paramount, roller coasters offered the perfect opportunity for men and women to sit incredibly close to one another, grabbing hold of their fellow passenger, whether the grab was wanted or not, in a way that would never normally be accepted away from the amusement park. Furthermore, in an era when ladies' legs, let alone undergarments, were never intentionally seen. The amusement park of Searing Virtue provided its very own thrills to certain eagle-eyed spectators, with every sharp drop making even the fanciest of dresses defy gravity. 